previously on Mr. Young. Echo, happy birthday! Can you keep our secret? Slab just told me he cheated on that pop quiz in your class. I kept that secret just fine. I've created this device that can target specific memories and erase them. In Derby's case, that would be that we're dating. Let me show you how it works using a volunteer from our audience. How about... You're up, Derby. You, young lady. What? I'm your girlfriend? <laughs> that doesn't sound like me. That doesn't sound like anyone. You're dating a student? She's gonna have to transfer out of your class. She'll be in the new science teacher's class. Who is the new science teacher? Mr. Kid. Who are you calling Kid? I'm Echo. That's a beautiful name for a beautiful girl. <laughs> Hello, class. My name is Mr. Kid. You're a kid. Which seems to be quite commonplace these days. I was the youngest graduate ever from the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute of Technology. And rather than going on to do groundbreaking work in the field of robotics engineering, I chose to give back to the community by becoming a high school science teacher. That is so noble of you. You know, he's not the first young genius to throw away a promising career to become a teacher. Hi there. Take a seat anywhere. Oh, no, I'm not a student. I'm Adam Young. I teach science. You do? Don't you think that's the kind of thing you should tell your best friend? Derby, you're in my class. Same with you, Slab. What are you doing here? You're not the only game in town. We've heard good things about Mr. Kid. Like what? Like he's not you. Would you care to stick around and observe for a while? Maybe let me know how I'm doing. You're doing great, Mr. Kid. I think that's an excellent idea. I'll stick around and observe. You should be observing Mr. Kid. He's a genius, like Albert Frankenstein. Albert Einstein. Whatever, the dude who made a monster out of dead body parts. <gasps> can you do that? Well, that's really just the story. Sure, we can make a monster. everyone. We've successfully created a monster. <laughs> and we couldn't have done it without the help of Mr. Morris, the art teacher. You've really opened my eyes to science. Unlike Adam, who always closed my eyes to science. All right, class. It's time for us to focus on that area of science that deals with the composition and properties of various elementary forms of matter, or as it's more commonly known, anyone? Oh, come on. Echo? Is it chemistry? You got it. And speaking of chemistry, I think we're seeing a great example of it right now. <laughs> okay, I think that's enough for one day. Class dismissed. It's not fair. Why can't it be science class forever? <laughs> What a wonderful presentation of George Orwell's novel, Animal Farm. I don't get it. A wolf didn't even blow their house down. Next class, we all look forward to seeing a presentation of another George Orwell classic, 1984, by Jordan Slabinski and Ivy Young. I'd hate to be those poor saps. I agree. Even if they do, by some extraordinary coincidence, have the same names as us. I'm hoping if I change the machine's polarity, it will reverse the effect it had on Echo and she'll remember we're dating. You better hope it works. She's been giving Mr. Kid the hee <laughs> Lousy other kid teacher. Now, I just need a test subject. 
Okay. Mrs. Byrne, do you remember what you had for breakfast this morning? I feel the floodgates opening. Your memories are coming back? No, the other floodgates. <laughs> it didn't work. Sounds like you may need to adjust the voltage to effectively transverse the gap junction between the presynaptic and postsynaptic cell membranes. Mr. Kidd, how much did you hear? Everything from you and Echo dating to Mrs. Byrne having an overactive bladder. <laughs> you stay away from her. I mean, Echo. You can have Mrs. Byrne. <laughs> Don't worry. I would never act on her obvious attraction to me. I mean, Echo. And Mrs. Byrne. There's an unspoken code among kid teachers. I've never heard that. It's unspoken. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Why don't I take this thing and see if a voltage adjustment does the trick? Well, that'd be great, thanks. A, a second set of eyes never hurts. You'd think that, but you'd be wrong. I'm growing an extra set of eyes as part of a medical experiment. Someday, I hope they'll help a blind person. Or two pirates. <laughs> so you have eyes in the back of your head? Ah, oh, that would have been a great place to grow them. I chose the bottoms of my feet. Ow, my eye. Ow, my eye. Ow, my eye. A class presentation? How could anyone expect us to read this fat pictureless magazine? Don't panic. I've already read the whole thing. Cover to cover? There's more after the cover? No problem. Why read when we can get the book on tape? <laughs> Write faster, nerds! Have either of you seen Mr. Kidd around? Can't you see we're working on a project? It's on a book by George someone. I didn't make it through the whole cover. <laughs> Unlike certain show-offs. 1984. <laughs> Great book. You know, the theme of a bleak future where a totalitarian government keeps its citizens under constant surveillance through Big Brother resonates as much today as it did when the book was written in 1948. Hmm? Sorry, you were talking? I was listening to this book on tape. And I had earplugs in. Why were you wearing earplugs? Because you're talking. Well, I hope you both enjoyed the book as much as I did. Uh, we read it in my book club when I was six. Book club? That's perfect. We can start one and get other people to read this and talk about it. Then we'll know what's in it. Quiet! Big Brother is watching us. My big brother, Jerry. He's always trying to get me in trouble with mom and dad. Oh, there you are, Mr. Kid. I've looked everywhere for you. Oh. Except Echo's face. <laughs> what happened to the unspoken code among kid teachers? It's more of an unspoken guideline. Sweetie, aren't you gonna introduce me to your friend? It's me, Adam. I'm sorry, do I know you? <laughs> you used the memory machine on her, didn't you? Of course I did. But not before making a small adjustment. You mean like adding a racing stripe? <laughs> More like adding a function that deleted you from all her memories and replaced you with me. Also, I did add a racing stripe. <laughs> Why would you do that? Just to give it a little extra flair. I meant, why alter Echo's memories? I wanted Echo to be my girlfriend, but making her fall in love with me would have taken weeks. Right, weeks, not years. You'd have to be a real loser for it to take years. See you after class, Snuggle Bunny Smoochy Dumpling. He's not your Snuggle Bunny Smoochy Dumpling. I'm your Snuggle Bunny Smoochy Dumpling. Although, once we resolve this whole memory wipe thing, maybe we could revisit the nickname conversation. The only nickname I have for you is Freakish Weirdo Stranger. Dumpling? Look, I know it sounds crazy, but you don't know this guy. What are you talking about? We've been through so much together. We went to outer space, defeated a chocolate kingpin, battled a giant chicken monster, did a Best of Mr. Young special. <laughs> Well, it was nice meeting you, creepy stranger. Okay, obviously we've all read 1984. But to refresh our memories, 
Let's hear a detailed plot summary from our Vault Disc member. Well, the book starts at the beginning, when the FBI warns everyone to stop making unauthorized copies. And then a lion appears and roars really loudly towards the camera. Hold on. You didn't read the book. You watched the movie. And more importantly, there's a movie? Right, I admit it. I watched the movie years ago. It's just, nobody's ever invited me to be in a book club before. Probably because I've never read a book before. And because people hate me. Derby, you won't believe this. Kid used my memory machine to erase all of Echo's memories of me and replace them with memories of himself. That's crazy. I also like to burden complete strangers with my problems. Well, no. Kid got to you too? Kid? My best friend, Mr. Kid, whose first name I don't know for some reason? Derby, I'm your best friend. Just try to remember, look at me. I can't, I'm wearing shoes. Ow, my eye, ow, my eye, ow. Mr. Tater, you need to fire Mr. Kid. Why would I fire my best by virtue of being my only kid teacher? I'm a kid teacher too. <laughs> What are the odds of a school having two kid teachers? I mean, if you were making this stuff up, you'd probably come up with 75 other ideas before you landed on something that outlandish. Mr. Tater, you don't know Mr. Kid. You just met him. What are you talking about? We've been through so much together. We fought Arthur the Killer Robot, pretended I was a famous painter, became Cyclopses, did a Best of Mr. Young special. That hasn't aired yet. Just to warn you, you're pretty light in it. What? If you made up 75 stories about this place, I'd be in like 63 of them. <laughs> huh? Sorry, it's already been edited. Okay. I got Mr. Tater's copy of 1984, the movie, which is apparently inside this box. <laughs> and wrapped with all this pretty ribbon. Do you know anything? This is the movie. You put it in the robot's mouth. I don't think we should be sneaking into the school like this. Think Tater recorded over 1984 in 1984. Isn't there somewhere else we could go to kiss? Come on. This is exciting. Turn it off, turn it off! Tater and your mom used to date? Wow, my dad would not be happy about this. At least, I imagine he wouldn't. I never knew who my father was. <laughs> it's weird. I've been losing a lot of hair lately. Hi there. You will not believe the day I've just had. Is dinner almost ready? I'm starving. Uh, my son didn't tell me he invited a friend over. Oh no, he got to you too? <laughs> and this keeps happening. <laughs> Honey, your strange, bolding friend is here. Actually, Mom, I don't know this person. I've never seen him before. That's a lie. Your son's a liar. Also, he's not your son. <laughs> Yummy roasted chicken, my favorite. That's not your favorite. That's my favorite. See? <laughs> I think you need to leave now. <laughs> A chemical reaction has two parts. The chemicals you start with, reactants, and the chemicals you end up with, products. Who could possibly fall asleep during science class? It's fun and informative. The snoring is coming from under my desk. Ow! There, I stopped it. You can go back to teaching, honey. Oh, my eye. Are you a pirate? No, 
Then I can't help you. <laughs> oh, my memory machine. Stay away from that. The racing stripe hasn't dried yet. <laughs> I'll get rid of this riffraff. But don't teach anything while I'm gone. I wouldn't want to miss a single moment of your class. <laughs> Derby, I'm your best friend. You don't know Mr. Kid. What are you talking about? We've been through so much together. We battled an evil dog catcher dressed as superheroes, <laughs> discovered a girl raised by elephants, lived 60 years together in a time dilation bubble, <laughs> did a best of Mr. Young special. <laughs> How does everyone know about the best of Mr. Young special? Have they been running promos or something? <laughs> you know, when I think back to all my experiences with Mr. Kid, I realize he's kind of a jerk. <laughs> He's not a... Would you help me defeat it? That jerk? You bet. What a jerk. <laughs> Next up, with their presentation on George Orwell's 1984, Jordan Slabinski, Ivy Young. Are you sure he's not gonna figure out we didn't read the book? It's called 1984. It's kind of obvious what it's about. 1984 is such a bodacious year. <laughs> bodacious to the max. <laughs> You heard me. Buy as much stock in fruitball computers as possible. Girls just want to have fun. Bustin' makes me feel good. Where's the beef? I pity the fool. <laughs> 1984. What was that? I'll tell you what that was. A perfect representation of George Orwell's 1984. I assume. What? Nothing. <laughs> Did you read the book? <laughs> of course, I teach literature. I'm familiar with all the classics. Like, War and Peace, the story of two renegade cops, Frankie War and Johnny Peace. <laughs> uh, Oliver Twist, the tale of a dance teacher named Oliver. <laughs> the Odyssey, which is Obviously about a minivan. Man, he is some book lover. Derby, I love your hat. Where did you get it? From a traveling hat salesman, of course. Does he have visors? I belong to an old-timey bank teller reenactment society. Why not ask him yourself? Here he comes. Come one, come all. Now don't be shy. If you've got a head, then I've got a hat for you. Hey, I've got a head. Me too. <laughs> then this is your lucky day, because... I've got hats for one and all. I've got hats for short and tall. I've got hats for those that work and those that play. I've got hats for every mood. I've got a hat for this here dude. And hats for every hour of the day. I've got leather ones and woolly ones, nerdy ones and bully ones. I've even got a hat to fit the Kaiser. Bumper shank. I've got hats for gorgeous ladies and hats for newborn babies. And for those who don't like hats, I have a visor. Absolutely adore my new hat, but why do they have wires in them? Well, you see, with the purchase of every hat, you get your memory back. <laughs> That's not a hat salesman. It's nobody we know. Not yet. Anymore. But you're about to. Again. did you do? I'm a genius genius. In less than a minute, I found 30 different ways to shut down your little science project. Which one did you go with? <laughs> Darn it! <laughs> Echo, please. Somewhere deep down, you must remember me. I'm the one you're meant to be with. What you two have isn't real. It is real. 
I still remember the moment I knew it was real. It was my birthday, and Mr. Kid had thrown me a huge surprise party right here in the quad. It was so thoughtful and amazing, and I was so overcome with emotion that I just grabbed him and... Adam? Okay, I get it. Wait, did you just call me Adam? I remember. I remember everything. He's not the one I'm supposed to be with. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> What? You love this creepy stranger dumpling? <laughs> Mr. Kid tricked us. He stole our memories, but kissing Adam brought them all back. Uh, that's wonderful. Well, you still have to bring all their memories back. <laughs> Hurry up, mister. I want you out of my school. You give kid teachers a bad name. Actually, you both do. There you are. You were supposed to get right home after school and do your chores, starting with cleaning all those clumps of hair out of the bathtub drain. Oh, but, 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 aren't you gonna say something? No, I certainly am. You should listen to your mother. She seems like a nice lady. Thank you, stranger. Uh.